Been a long time traveling here below. Been a long time traveling away from thy home. Been a long time traveling here below to lay this body down. Been a long time traveling here below. Been a long time traveling away from my home. Been a long time traveling here below to lay this body down. Been a long time traveling here below. Been a long time traveling away from my home. Been a long time traveling here below to lay We learn a lot of our music from people, but also archives, which are basement rooms with fluorescent light. And you're sitting in this cubicle, and maybe the cubicle has, you know, uh, carpeting all around it. And you're sitting in this plastic chair in this library in the basement, and an archivist brings you a blank white CD, and you listen to it, and you can travel through space and time to another room and you hear an old woman singing or you hear a fiddler and you try to imagine what that room looked like. Did it have wallpaper or was it white walls or did the lady, did she make food before they made the recording? Did she talk with a loud voice or a soft voice? And so one of these recordings we heard was of this woman fiddler named Lella Todd and we tracked down a woman who grew up next to her who's in her 80s. Her name is Letha Sexton. And every time we visit her, she welcomes us into her house and feeds us chili and a bologna sandwich each. And we talk, and then she tells us this story, which is about her childhood. She says, when I was a little girl, I lived on the banks of the Red River. And to grow up back then was very different from the way kids grow up now. We didn't have TV. We didn't have radio. So you had to make your own fun. But I was very lucky because I lived near Miss Lella. And if you lived near Miss Lella, then you had it made. We would go to her house and play hopscotch on her gravel road. Miss Lella was a short, squat little lady, and she wore glasses, and she giggled all the time like she was a little kid. She had a beautiful garden. I remember Miss Lella loved flowers. We used to go behind the house with Miss Lella out into the woods, and there she taught us to hunt for squirrel. Miss Lella was a great shot, and she could skin the hides off those things faster than any man could. She loved to do anything outdoors, so there were many days when she'd go down the bank and get into her little boat and catch fish. Now Miss Lella had a pet crow, which she caught and tamed. She taught it to talk, and when she called, the crow would fly down and land on her shoulder. She also kept a pet cat whose name was Kitty Press. And her husband, Claude, liked to feed Kitty Press hot buttered biscuits under the table. So they had a fat cat. <laughs> there was one winter so cold, and my mother lost a child in childbirth. And Miss Lella came to the front door, and she had this beautiful bouquet of white flowers for my mother. She was just a precious person. Miss Lella didn't have any children of her own. 
she kind of adopted our whole neighborhood of kids. So we'd all run down to her house after school and she would fix us a snack. She had a huge wood-burning stove and she would pop popcorn for us and she'd fry hot griddle cakes right on top of her stove. After we ate, we'd go into the living room because there she had this red velvet couch. And on it, she kept all of her instruments. Miss Lella could play anything with strings on it. She would take her fiddle out onto the front porch. We'd gather around and she would play for us. And when Miss Lella played, us kids would dance and dance. Now all of our community knew Miss Lella as a fiddler, so if they had a party or dance, they would ask her to come and play. She was always ready to go. She never traveled anywhere without her fiddle and her rifle. She would head down the road and she would meet up and form a band with some other musicians. And they have beautiful memories of playing with her. They'd say, oh, Miss Lella, she played the prettiest music in the world. She would roll the notes in there just perfect. If we started playing at supper time, we wouldn't stop until 12 o'clock, 1 in the morning. She would hang right in there. She wouldn't quit playing until she about fell over. Miss Lella was in her first heaven playing music. And that's the story that we hear in Letha Sexton's kitchen. And then we get in Letha's car and she drives us down the road to where Miss Lella is buried next to her husband, Claude. And you stand there quietly. And then go a little further down the road to where Miss Lella's house used to stand. And Letha says, I can just picture her standing there with her pet crow on her shoulder. And then she turns to us and she says, I wouldn't miss that life, just living by her for the world. i 
expect you'll miss me when I'm gone, but I'm going through. When the war is over, I'll come back to you. Going across the mountain, oh, fare you well. Going across the mountain, oh, fare you well. We'll close with a song from Doc Boggs. He lived on the border of Kentucky and Virginia. Both sides, actually. He went back and forth. And he played an amazing banjo, and this is uh, it's what inspired the singing and the playing. Thanks so much for having us.
Thanks for coming, everybody. Have a great day at work. <laughs> Go tell the world the truth, people. <laughs>